சங்கடம்ீத்திரசடிதியில் வந்திடும் சங்கதி சௌதரியே Welcome back to SL Chennai Speaks Out. The song that we just heard is very often sung at many temple festivals all across this state. The singer is a differently inclined person. We're going to go now and talk about religion. How does religion deal with people who belong to sexual minorities? We have a Roman Catholic priest here. Father, we'd like to ask you, what do you think about this discussion that we've been having today? Why is it that religions tend to Uh, ostracize and look down some religions on people who are different with regard to religion okay the religion has got its own uh, basis and its own revelation its own moral truths uh, with regard to catholic religion i mean the catholic church it appreciates it respects it honors uh, our gay friends the difficulty the church finds with regard to that point of approving it as a marriage because marriage is a sacrament and marriage is always between a man and a woman and here it is a different case so that comes the real crux of the problem when it comes as a way of life and also with regard to the children that they who are going to be brought up in that background so it has concerns with those concerns but i think so this is an area that we have to interact we have to relate we have to find a new way out ultimately whether we can live as basically dignified human beings do you think that the church has got it right do you believe that the church actually understands where people like sunil like winnie like gabriel like shobhna like elizabeth are actually coming from is that the problem i think the church has come a long way from the moralistic point of point of understanding them as something <laughs> sinful as something immoral today it, it has come to understand them as human beings and they have these different inclinations how to cope with it how to understand them how these people all can live together as one human family right. i think that is the ch- journey that church is trying to move towards right. that thank you winnie i'd like to ask you do you feel discriminated against by other churches that actually don't believe in sexual you know deviations i'm an anglican um i'm an anglican priest i i don't interact well i have friends in other denominations i don't have to work um extensively with people from other religions and one of the great examples actually is genesis the genesis story for christians that first passage the first story of creation where it says and god created the male and female that word is it's not that god created a male and a female it's actually god created one person male and female it's a pretty powerful interpretation it's a, it's a direct translation from the hebrew but that isn't how we hear the story and we've been taught it a different way and a lot of the the text is the same way and our traditions are the same way right i'd like to ask you do your parishioners know that yes. you are actually different yes the first sunday in my new church um elizabeth and the kids came and we were all welcomed in the circle and they hired me because i was out i i hoped among other things i hope but right so you were out of the closet and they were quite happy with that right yes, yes. okay sunil how does your religion deal with you <laughs> such a loaded question i i have my own dialogue with god i have my own way of uh practicing my religion i go to temples and i i mean i go to churches i go to uh, places of worship on my own i just go as a devotee to a place of worship but what, and i pray at home so my i think my spiritualism comes from the fact that i practice at home right let me ask our audience here the young lady up there how do you think religion should actually deal with people who are different according to me it's like um, religion is just one more method i mean it's just one more way to criticize them how do you think religion should actually deal with people like this uh actually i would like to tell my view first yes. and uh, it is like i don't have anything with people how they are we i, I accept anyone no matter who are they are but uh according to my religion we say it is a sin this is a sin like homosexuality or lesbian it's a sin we consider it a sin i basically can the act is a sin that's what is my view and according to my religion we accept people who they are the way they are but only the acts is a problem ma'am you want to say ma'am, something i actually oppose or want to oppose or neither heterosexuality bisexuality or homosexuality are inherently sinful it is totally like free of sin i could say because it's all about safety consensual and like commitment that's it there is no religion which talks about you know you have to do this you have to do that you have to be this and you have to be that way 
it's the people who claim to be religiously inclined who give all these uh, different interpretations religion as such any religion for that matter preaches only love and total acceptance of people as they are right let me ask shobhana here shobhana you tell us how your religion has dealt with you or how you've dealt with your own religion as well I think there's a growing consensus um, amongst ourselves that we are religious. We do practice the rituals and everything that goes with it, and we are not anti-faith. We are not anti-faith at all. We embrace our religion. We we do that. We get up and pray in the morning. So for us, it's not an issue at all. We we are religious people. We live in India for God's sake. Right. So let me turn to Magdalene. Magdalene, tell us when families come to you for counselling. is this one of the things that actually comes up now and then about uh, how they deal with this in terms of their own religions different religions whichever very difficult for uh, people coming from the christian background to accept because this concept of sin is so much uh, ingrained in them and i do see many uh, hindu families as well they do all this fasting and prayer and going to different temples and all of that so i think many people uh, who are religious resort to rituals and their religion to help change their son or you know that's how they have worked at you so know so there really still is an issue of acceptance is isn't that there. right yes. so you want to say something if somebody religious is telling you like this thing is going on and you just accepted it what is wrong if we accept it normally why does somebody religious have to tell you what to do why can't you just accept it normally that's a valid uh, point that you made but the fact that in india that uh, there are two people no, the general population would blindly believe one is your doctor and one is uh, <laughs> someone who's preaching to in your religion we swear by them you know for the general public you know we all want hope you know we all want our children to be normal we all want our children to be healthy and have a happy life and when parents see that you know people of different sexual orientations going through all this trouble and there's the fear that these kids are going to be so vulnerable that their children might be vulnerable if they find out that the children have a different orientation so what do you do you want recourse for that you want some sort of solution religion seems to offer that doctors seem to offer that and what we're trying to deal with is now that we work with medical professionals and try to sensitize them and say that there is no cure there is no treatment there is no therapy the f- the fact is that we want doctors to help these children accept themselves right So Neil I'm going to move now into the article 377 right and uh, the way it's been repealed where do you stand legally right now you yourself um I think I'm legal in Delhi <laughs> <laughs> You heard that <laughs> <laughs> No that was just a joke <laughs> So you're going to be going to Delhi very often. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I have to find a partner in Delhi. No. <laughs> um, it's just that uh, what it does. Uh, the connotation is that even if there is a situation where uh, a law enforcement person or agency picks up somebody from a sexual minority and tries to hold se- se- Section 377 against that person, the Delhi High Court ruling will stand. Shobhan, I'd like to ask you: Would you like to be married? Would you like to be able to legally marry? <laughs> That's a difficult question. Why? <laughs> Because the 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 role models that we have of marriage are heterosexual couples. And if I'm with a woman, I do not my I want to be with a woman. I don't want her or me to take on a, a, a take on a role as a man. So in in those terms, I think for marriage we need to look beyond marriage. marriage is traditionally between a man and woman for a gay couple i would say it has to be beyond the, those preconceptions so that means you would not really like to be married is um, that, is that like, what you're telling okay. us okay i'd like to be legally married to get the benefits of lic policy of being having owning a home together of having health benefits yes for these reasons yes inheritance inheritance, inheritance yes. property matters and yes, all these reasons right. yes let's ask gabriel you gabriel tell us i won't mind a big church wedding <laughs> Father, are you listening? <laughs> But <laughs> we'll, we'll fly with you. Yes, 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 exactly. I'll keep you in mind. Well, <clears throat> well, not exactly. Depends. But you know, if you ask me, I wouldn't mind. It depends again. You know, it's a question mark for me as well, mm-hmm. because you know, as we talk about it, it's t- irrespective of whether any country, any in the West or anywhere else, you know, uh, how secure the relationship is. But still, there is always a question mark. So depends. But if at all kids are involved, then I would love to get married again right. in a church. Um, 
Sir, let me ask you, do you think that people who are different should be able to adopt children, should be able to marry? Now, we've heard it from them. What do you feel? Yes, they should be allowed to adopt children. Not for just one reason, it's for two reasons. One is that they would probably get to a normal way of living like heterosexuals. Second thing, we have got a lot of children who are fatherless, motherless. It will be a great boon for them as well. Would you like to uh, see people like this married to each other? Yes, of course. I like to see people coming out and getting married. Uh, it is because uh, the world at this moment, in the present scenario, the world is breeding to death because of the high birth rate. So if they adopt people or who are orphans, who are fatherless, motherless, okay, uh, then there would be a reduction or reduce in poverty and uh, it would help the society. And I have one question. Uh, how do you think that anti-discrimination laws uh, that are made are beneficial to the society? I can hold that law and say, you can't discriminate against me. And maybe, hopefully, my employer or whoever's discriminating me will be scared to actually uh, discriminate based on that because there's a law already existing. I'd like to ask a final question today of our audience, OK? We've got 7.5% of India's population who are thinking differently. Now, Dr. Roja, do you think that it's time that we begin to accept, accept this fact as it is today? See, acceptance is an individual uh, view. OK, so whether I accept it or not is my own view. So basically, if you ask me, I will not accept it. So we haven't heard from you. I'd like you to tell me that if now you have a couple, lesbian couple, a gay couple, who shift in as your neighbors, how are you going to treat them? See, I'm a lecturer by profession, and I believe live and let live, all right? It's not that, you know, OK, this is because even if a gay cries, tears comes. He gets wounded, blood comes. It doesn't mean that's something different. So I believe if something happens in my life, I will accept the way people are. Live and let live. Right. So live and let live. Quick final comments. I think live and let live is the best thing to do. I mean, I think truly we, we, we have to be an inclusive society. A progressive society is an inclusive society. And right. I, I like to believe that we are all progressive people. OK. Uh, what about you, Winnie? To get, I agree with you, live and let live. To get there, we're changing, we need to change the institutions of our society. And to do that, take some intentionality. That, I'm, I'm glad to hear that people listen to their preachers as a preacher. I'm glad to know that that influences people. But the church does need to take a stand. Our educational institutions need to take a stand. As, a, as groups, we need to take public positions so that we can get to a place where it's much easier to say something like live and let live and know that that can be true. Thank you very much, Winnie and Magdalene and Sunil. We've tried to cover the various aspects of what it means to be differently oriented and, as a result, to be ostracized in most places. And as we say goodbye, we leave you with voices that express the hopes and the aspirations of a community that yearns for acceptance. Acceptance from you and me. When they revoke or when they step in your domain, either office or a relationship or you know home, if at all they are not disturbing, why you want to? Why the society wants to disturb us? So acceptance is the base requirement from the society. Accept people as they are. I just want to live like any other guy. I just want to have a family of my own. I want to uh, be being loved. I have, well, I have certainly noticed a, uh, a change in the attitude of the gay community itself towards being willing to be self-identifying. And I think that that has created a climate which is going to be much more pleasant for everybody. Thank you.